Hey church, it is so good to see you. I hope you're really well. Big hello to you if it's the morning, the afternoon or the evening, whatever time you're tuning into today. Hello from me. My name is Sarah and I'm from um, our Chester campus, which I absolutely adore and I love. Um, but a big shout out to all of you guys, whether you're from Manchester, North, South, Sheffield, Cardiff and beyond. We love you all and you're also welcome here. Um, I'm really excited today. I'm going to share a little bit about what God has been talking to me about in my devotionals. Um, some really meaningful stuff that I want to share with you a little bit. Um, so we're going to jump straight in. So if you've got your Bible where you want to turn it on, open it up or pick up your paper Bible, we're going to turn to Galatians 5 because we're looking at the fruits of the Spirit today. And um, this is what it says. And we're going to start at verse 16. And it says this. So I say, live by the Spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. So you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual, Im Im sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissension, fractions and envy, drunkenness, orgies and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking and envy each other. Wow, there's a lot in there. So much good stuff in there for us to look at. And um. I just want to share a little quote that um, I came across in my devotionals the other day from Timothy Keller. And it says this, it says, the spirit fueled development of Christ like character is liberating because it brings us closer to being the people we were designed to be. The people our spirit renewed hearts want us to be. It's wordy, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read it again. It says, the spirit fueled development of Christ like character is liberating. Because it brings us closer to being the people we were designed to be. The people our spirit renewed hearts wants us to be. Now that's quite a heavy and big quote to start on. But I, what I really like about it is we are all fueled by the spirit to pursue what who we are meant to be in Christ. And that is where we produce our fruit from. That's where the fruit comes from. When we are fueled by the spirit, being led by the spirit and we're pursuing all that Christ has for us then we'll see the fruit. So it's a good place for us to start. And if we need a little reminder, here's what the fruits are. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Wow, what a list. That is quite a list. Now, I know that in my life, I really want to become more Christ-like. Um, I have given my life to Jesus. I've surrendered my heart to God and said, I want to be as much like you as I can possible in my life. And um, I want to be able to produce these fruits of the spirit, because as I do that, I become more Christ-like. And it's really easy for me in my kind of flesh, worldly sense of Sarah, um, in my own strength to go, I need to be more loving i need to be more faith-filled more gentle more full of self-control i need to be like these and i can try and like pursue it and go after it in my own world and in my own strength but what i love about these verses is that it's not going to be in my own strength i love that at first it's pursue god first pursue the spirit first and then as that happens i'll produce the fruit it's not like oh, I've put loads of work into being faithful because I've just gone after it myself. No, it's as I pursue God, I will become more faithful, more loving, more kind, more gentle. And it's just such a weight of the mind to know actually pursue God first, seek Jesus first and these things will come. Um, and I just love that. I love that that's, you know, the way Jesus leads us. Now, I think what we need to remember and we look at the fruits of the spirit is to not get them confused with the spiritual gifts. Sometimes when we look at the spiritual gifts and the fruits of the spirit, we kind of lump them together. But actually, they're two separate lists. 
Um, and what I love about fruit, what I love about as we look at this, um, is that when spiritual gifts are mentioned in the Bible, the fruit comes because of the result of something. The fruit comes because of the result of something. It's the same with like an actual fruit, an orange or an apple. It comes because of the result of growth and, and nutrients and water and light. And I'm not a biologist so, or a grower, so I don't know. But I love that in this, that the fruit is a result of something. So when the fruit of the spirit is displayed in our lives and it's an evidence in our lives, it's because it's a result of us pursuing God. It's a result of us spending time in his presence. It's the result and evidence of God in our lives being led by the spirit. It's a sign of spiritual maturity in our lives when we produce these fruits. And um, I really, really love that it's it's a result of something it's a result of pursuing god more in my life it's like you know the more i pursue my creator the one who loves me the absolute best thing in my life i get something in return which is such a blessing that i get to have these incredible gifts and fruits i should say because i've spent more time with jesus what an honor that is now it's totally worth saying that when we look at the fruits they're not on their own here in the Bible. They are preceded by, you know, the verses that talk about the acts of the flesh, whether it's sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, it goes on and on and on. It kind of lists it all off. Like, we can't ignore that those things have been listed. But the reality is, like, we do have human desire. We do have, you know, we talk about kind of the, the battle between flesh and spirit and and the flesh wants us to do certain things like you know it talks about all the different all the different bits in the list but those things prevent us from fully spiritually producing the fruit and it says in verse 17 it says the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh so we basically find ourselves in the place where you can't have both <laughs> you can only have one and um i know that i want to pursue the spirit and unlike um, the gifts of the Spirit in 1 Corinthians 12, if you want to go look at that up at another point, I think the fruits of the Spirit get a little less attention, maybe. Um, <laughs> um, I think it's because it perhaps takes a little more of ourselves to produce the fruit. Because um, the reality is, and what we've just read, is that we have to die to ourselves daily in order to really lay down what we want but pick up what god has for us pursue the spirit pursue his word pursue him and produce the fruit so it takes a little bit more of us and who we are and our energy and requirement to be able to do that but it's totally worth it <laughs> it's totally worth it and then lastly to kind of finish off as we're looking at the fruits if we look at verse 23 this is such a good bit it it talks about that there is no law against these fruits like there's no restrictions, no limits. There's no like, oh, you've shown too much love today or you've been too gentle or you've been too kind or full of joy and peace and patience. Like there's no like limits to those. And what a goal to strive after. You know, I want to be someone that says, oh, Sarah, she's she's full of joy. She's full of faithfulness. She's full of like gentleness, self-control. I want to be that person um, who does those things because as I produce fruit, I glorify God. And as I do that, the other thing that happens is that people see those things in you and they go, what is that about you? And you go, that's God in my life. It glorifies him and it points other people to him. Oh, the fruit of the spirit. I know it's been a whirlwind, but I just wanted to share a few thoughts. So church, let me encourage you today that it is worth laying down your life daily to pursue God in everything you do. Because as you do, you're going to pursue produce the most incredible fruits of the spirit and as you do you're going to glorify god and you're going to point other people to him so what does that look like for you guys in your day today tomorrow the next day the next months what does it look like to really go after what god has for you and lay down yourself daily and get ready get ready to see the fruits producing you in your life and in your everyday walk with jesus i'm going to pray for us and then we're going to crack on Jesus, I thank you so much that you have a plan and a purpose for each and every one of us. God, I thank you that as we pursue you, these beautiful fruits of the Spirit are just produced in us that can glorify you and point other people to you. Amen. 
Church, I love you so much. I can't wait to see you. Um, make sure you get online. Make sure you try and get to a campus or a location. Grab us on our social media. We would love to chat to you and speak to you further. You're amazing church and friends from the field. See you soon. Take care. Bye.